Hi, you guys. Welcome back to Meaningful Motivations with Tracy Erickson. And of course, if you are new to this channel, welcome. My name is Tracy Erickson, and this video is going to tell you the truth about the twin flame experience. So stay tuned. a lot of so-called spiritual groups on social media, such as Facebook groups and things like that. And I decided to make a video today about the actual truth of the twin flame experience because there are so many self-proclaimed spiritual people out there who believe that they are a twin flame with another person and that all of the suffering that they're experiencing through this relationship must be leading to something greater. And I believe that the truth of Twin Flames has already been spoken on this channel, but it just wasn't under that title. So we're going to go over it here today, and I'm going to offer you the truth. I just want to take a moment to tell you guys about Tracy's Apothecary. Tracy's Apothecary is my Etsy shop where I am selling my handmade essential oil and crystal creations. All of the products from Tracy's Apothecary were created in a sacred space and with strong intention. So if you want to check it out, go to Tracy's Apothecary.etsy.com. I'm sure that some people's idea of a twin flame may differ here and there, but generally speaking, after viewing what goes on a lot of these spiritual communities around twin flames, um, it seems that generally it's a consensus. Everyone pretty much agrees that a twin flame is a relationship with someone you were meant to meet to spark some kind of growth or spiritual development in yourself, right? But technically, anyone we meet can do that. Any single person you meet in this world can be a mirror to the spiritual truth that lies within you. Anyone. They do not have to share a soul with you in order to make you mad enough to try to change your ways. <laughs> Literally anyone can do this, including your abusive parents as you were growing up. All it takes is spiritual maturity and complete honesty when looking at yourself. According to Google, a twin flame involves two people who share the same soul. Once these twin flames meet, this results in an intense magnetic attraction and connection. These individuals share similar past experiences and trauma. Two people who share the same soul, huh? <laughs> so evidently, people believe, based on this Google search, that twin flames are two completely separate individuals who share a common soul. I find that interesting because your soul is actually your unique divine spark of God. Your soul is the only thing that makes you different from every other being there is in this entire universe. So no, your soul is not shared with another being, you guys. Now, I do believe that you can recognize other souls from previous lifetimes and that recognition can spark some very deep feelings. And because your souls basically have come together once again, you may see that you share different experiences and different traumas that are very much in alignment with one another. But that's because your souls are familiar with each other and your souls are like karmic partners. You basically, you know each other from 
not only this lifetime, but previous lifetimes. And that doesn't mean that you share the same soul with them. It just simply means that you resonate with them. So the actual truth of the twin flame experience is that you have a soul and anyone else you meet also has their own soul. Now, you may be in the same grouping of souls as other human beings, but that doesn't mean that you share the exact same soul. You are still your own individual spark of the creator. No other human has what you have as an individual. So I think that it's actually kind of like this common misconception that you're sharing a soul with another human being. Because technically, we all come from the same source creator. So technically, I mean, if you really want to peel back all the layers, anyone on this planet could be your freaking twin flame because we all come from the same creator, no matter what you call this creator. In my series called The Evolution of Consciousness, it was a six-part series that I created hoping to evolve consciousnesses of anyone who wanted to watch the series. And on the sixth video of that series, it was called Love Divine. And it was in that video where I told the story of Jesus in the sixth test of the brotherhood. And he became completely enthralled by this beautiful maiden who could sing this beautiful song. And his thoughts wouldn't leave her. He was literally taken under by this fire of desire. So within that story, what we learn is that the hardest test of them all is the test of carnal love. So what I believe the twin flame experience really is, is each individual soul actually trying to find wholeness within themselves. Because in the end, Jesus, he didn't run away with the maiden. He knew that he had bigger, better things to fulfill in his lifetime. So he was able to shake it off and finally come to his senses, even though the test of carnal love was his absolute hardest test to pass. In that video called Love Divine, I even explained it with the two tarot cards, the lover and the devil. And both of them are the number six in numerology, which I find interesting because the test of carnal love was the sixth test of the brotherhood. And so I find it very interesting. And I'm going to share that with you guys again here now. To explain this love divine using tarot, I'm going to refer to these two cards. The lovers, which is number six, as you can see, and the devil, which is number 15, which digits down to six, because one plus five is six. So numerolo numerologically, numerologically speaking, how do you say that? When you're speaking in terms of numerology, the lovers is a six, but so is the devil. Because when referring to numerology, you always have to digit it down. So add the digits together until you reach a single digit. So on both spectrums of this, you see three figures. So in the lovers card, you see the man, the woman, and the angelic being. And in the devil, you see the man, the woman, and the devil. So it's kind of like the name Miriam when you think about it, because it can mean bitter or beloved. So it all depends on where you're putting your consciousness, right? So if all of the figures in each of these images are representing aspects of yourself, Okay, then that can help explain as well. So when you're on the more egoic side of love, it's very much more connected to the devil. This is the carnal love, the love that consumed Jesus like a fire within him after he met Miriam in the Hall of Harmony. He was struggling and he was losing his faith in God and his mission, all because he was becoming consumed 
by this lustful form of love. And that could be represented by the devil card. Um, because as you can see here, the man is looking to the woman and they're both chained to the devil. Okay. Then Jesus finally figured it out. Um, and he realized the divine love that he is here to teach. So if these are all aspects of yourself on the card, you'll see that here the man looks to the woman. So your conscious mind finally looked to subconscious mind who could see the divine. And so, because she's looking up there. So in one sense, Jesus was consumed by carnal love and it was a lower desire, is very lustful. And he was using his conscious mind to simply put himself through more and more suffering because he was desiring her so deeply. But when he finally realized his true mission here, he was able to look beyond that lower level and see the higher, the divine, right? And in that video about love divine, you will remember that the maiden's name was Miriam. And when I looked it up, Miriam means bittersweet and it means beloved. So love is like a spectrum that is bitter as well as sweet. And so um, basically, it's when we are not in that balanced state where we understand the truth underlying everything when it comes to love. When we are in that imbalanced state, then we are subject to being bitter one minute and completely enthralled the next. And um, so anyway, it's hard to find your center when you're off to one of those extremes, right? So it's just important to find your balanced center when it comes to relationships, especially because, you know, relationships with other people are what can become the toughest part of life, literally, because we're seeking outside of ourselves to try to understand universal truths that exist already inside of us. So as I was thinking of the twin flame experience, I remembered of the, you know, Middle Eastern poet Rumi and his poems of love, but his poems were not about finding your soulmate outside of yourself. Rumi spoke of the true soulmate you seek being your own divine counterpart, your own self. So I agree with Rumi that the love that we seek can come from within. And we get confused when we think it comes from the outer environment. So I went over to my bookshelf. <laughs> I knew I had a roomy book in there somewhere. It's pretty dusty. <sighs> Could you see that? <sighs> okay. So let, let me just randomly open to a random poem by Rumi, okay? Here's one. All right. So random poem. All my friends. All my friends departed like dreams, left alone. I called upon one friend to become my entire dream. This is the one who soothes my heart with endless tenderness and love. The one who one hour bestows inner peace and the next, the nectar of life. This dream too, as it arrives, I come alive and as it departs, I'm helpless again. So, Really, what he's saying in that one is that basically all my friends departed like dreams, it says. And it, in the end, it says, this dream too, as it arrives, I come alive. And as it departs, I'm hopeless again. So if we leave our happiness and balance and harmony to other people, to provide to us, we are never going to stay in that very happy place because eventually they leave and they've departed once again and you are once again helpless. So Rumi always asks to connect with your inner self through his poetry. He likes to point out that the real lover, the true lover that you seek is your own inner being, your own divine spark. And so many of us forget about that 
because like Jesus, they are so enthralled by carnal love. But remember, carnal love is from your lower self. The lover that you seek is yourself. You do not need someone else to show you the way to that. Do you believe that you're in a twin flame relationship? And if so, could you tell us in the comments down below how that has actually helped you to become one with yourself? How has the existence of another human being in your life brought you closer to yourself? And usually it's because of this separation that takes place, right? The twin flames who say that they've learned the most always learn the most during their twin flame separation. <laughs> so why do you think that is, you guys? I think it's because while your alleged twin flame is in your life, it's nothing but a distraction from the real truth. And once they're gone, you're able to seek solace within yourself. And so really, this whole twin flame narrative that's out there where your soul is only half of who you are and some other person on the planet out there is walking around with the other half of your soul, it is baloney. <laughs> so sorry. I'm so sorry to you guys who believe otherwise, but it's baloney. You are whole and complete as it is. And that's why it took separation from your alleged twin flame for you to understand your own soul and your own spiritual path. So many twin flames don't even learn a thing from this other person until there is a separation. And there's the flaw in the twin flame narrative right there. So I really want to know what you guys think about this, though. I do understand that within this community, I may have an unpopular opinion regarding the twin flame experience, but I am drawing upon the wisdom of Jesus and his experiences and also my own inner wisdom and just the fact that I feel like if your twin flame was truly your other half, there would be no separation whatsoever. Well, that about wraps it up for this video. So if you like this video, be sure to click that like button and share this video with all your twin flames out there. And of course, if you're a viewer but not yet a subscriber, I would just love for you to click subscribe down below and once you have subscribed you can then turn on the notifications bell if you would like to be notified each and every time I upload a new video. Thank you guys so much for watching and spending your time with me. I love you and I'll see you next time. Bye.